Get a skirt blue with Premier Guitars Big Five. Really hard for me to choose a favorite guitar, actually. Like, I think there's sort of two different schools of thought with guitar players. There's like the um, the kind of like Angus Young, Fugazi, like you're always playing the same guitar throughout the whole history of the band because you have like your one favorite kind of thing or the Willie Nelson thing or something like that. That's awesome. I fall more into the real Rick Nielsen kind of camp where I'm like playing a different guitar all the time because I, I love guitars and I'm always on that like quest for the ultimate tool and uh but you know so right now the guitars that i'm making um under the god's key instruments brand are my favorites and i'm home on a snow day right now so i don't have one with me but um but yeah the um the craftsman uh series one model is what i've been using live the most lately which is um just a really simple uh chambered wenge top guitar with a super hot with a super hot pickup in it with big slugs that sounds great and it's um, really lively and kind of does does everything that I need to do. And I just recently came out with a uh, bass version of the Craftsman as well, and that's currently my favorite bass. When I designed the Craftsman guitar, the thing that I had most in mind was balance, uh, both a physical balance of the guitar and also a tonal tonal balance. So physically, the Series One is. Um, it has a strap button on the heel of the neck, kind of like an SG, which for me hangs a lot better than a strap button on a horn. And it has a chambered body. So it's really kind of lively, but a hardwood top, the Wenge hardwood top. So it's really lively and resonant, but not overly feedback prone. And, but that makes the body a little bit lighter. So to counter the, the light weight of the body, I used an open back tuner, um, on the headstock so that the, the headstock wouldn't get heavy and have neck dive. So it's a guitar that just sits right where, you, where I need it to um, when I hang it from me. And it's just like between like the overwound pickup and the resonance of the body, it's the kind of guitar where notes just sort of jump right out of it. And I always have the most fun playing guitars where the, um, you know, the sound just wants to leap out of the guitar. And I think I accomplished that with this design. The pickup in the Craftsman is called a slug jammer. And I, um, I spec'd an overwound ceramic pickup, but also with like big um, oversized slugs instead of the traditional pole pieces. And it creates a slightly less localized magnetic field, although not one quite as um, wide as like a, a bar magnet. I reserve that for my log jammer pickup. Um, but it's sort of, um, it's just big and articulate with a lot of thunk, but still a ton of, a ton of output and full frequency response. In the past 10 years, I've been trying out a lot of different finishes on guitars and I've finally come up across something that I really, really like. And it's a particular satin polyurethane that just feels really, really good. It's never tacky. Um, and it's always just really nice and fast and easy to play. And no matter how sweaty you get or something, it never, it never gets to the point where it's tacky. And a lot of like the, the nitro finishes and gloss finishes that I was using early on just don't have that properties. And so I'm, I'm really happy with where I'm at now in the finish. My Desert Island album is actually, I think a pretty ubiquitous choice. It's while I love to pick something obscure and really cool. I think the thing that I've been listening to most for my entire life, life and have still consistently got things out of it at different points in my life, gotten things new out of it at different points in my life is Led Zeppelin one. I mean, when it comes to like heavy rock, I don't want to say they're the band that started it all, but they're the band that started it all for me. Um, they're the first, the first band that like I really connected with in the world of classic rock, which was then, you know, a point of entry to me to all of the, the rock music that I got into after that. I actually started out with the cassette version of that record and uh, from, I uh, bought from Columbia House tapes for a penny. The track listing on the cassettes, they would, they would actually, for, for to really well match the run times of side A and side B, they would actually have a different track listing than the album. And if I recall correctly, the cassette that I had had um, Your Time's Gonna Come as the first song on the record. And that still is probably my favorite Led Zeppelin song.
my biggest guitar culture pet peeve is maybe my biggest pet peeve with humanity, which is people who think they know everything and people who are very quick to give you the advice to do exactly what they did or to do exactly the opposite of what they did. There's sort of two sides of the same coin as opposed to someone who wants to empower you to make good decisions on your own. I feel like when I am scrolling through internet content about whether it's like a pedal review or whether it's a manufacturer talking about their own pedals or whether it's um, just something in the, the comments about a piece of gear or something, there's always, there's always somebody who knows, thinks they know more than everybody else, thinks that other people um, you know, don't have the ability to make up their own minds or aren't capable or whatever, or actually what probably my even bigger pet peeve, which is a, adjacent to that is that person who doesn't respect that other people are also passionate about things, but might have different opinions and all that other people also work hard. I just like when everybody is kind and supportive of each other's playing and, and appreciates the progress that their, you know, their peers and their contemporaries are making. And a guitar here of mine that would shock people, I think, is actually this jazz guitar player named Tuck Andrus. I had the privilege of seeing his, his duo, Tuck and Patty, at uh, the Berkeley College of Music Performance Center. That was the first time that I saw somebody using guitar to sort of fill the void of an entire band. And he was doing it without any distortion, just, just guitar. I think he had a volume pedal maybe, and that was it. But he was able to do sort of bass lines, lead lines and drums sort of all, all at the same time um, in an accompaniment role for, for Patty's vocals and also in a, um, in a lead role to sort of fill the space when she wasn't singing and, you know, and then to do that for an hour plus set um, and be creative and virtuosic in a way that I had never heard before that was um, I think really influential to me and, and got me thinking about tapping in a different way. And a lot of the sort of tapping techniques I'll use, like for example, the, the intro to this, the Converge song Concubine, where I'm doing like a, a thumb slap tapping thing. Like, I think I picked that up from Tuck. Um, if you've never heard of Tuck Andrus before, a good spot to, a good point of entry would be his cover of Hendrix's Castles Made of Sand. So check it out, really, really fantastic guitar player. It's really hard to sort of pick one secret weapon for what I do in my work as a musician and engineer just because there's so much minutia that goes into the process of making a record. But if I had to pick one thing that I think is one of the most important things to me in the work that I do is, is the need for and the desire to always make myself a little bit uncomfortable. And finding new techniques to make myself uncomfortable is something that I've always sought to do. Making yourself uncomfortable, it creates an opportunity for change. And, you know, when you've had a career in music as long as I have, the need for a constant change is, is really important. Otherwise, you can totally settle into old ways of doing things. So, you know, whether it's like trying a new piece of gear, trying new tuning on a guitar, playing with new people, um, trying a new a process in a different way um, it's it's all super valid and all allows you the opportunity to create new ways that are hopefully you know hopefully just as exciting as when you started creating music for the first time Go side.